When it comes to fitness supplements, a lot of them can be placed in what seems like two categories. You've got the gold standard, encompassing really basic stuff that at this point everyone and their grandmother has used, and then on the other side you have stuff which is, uh... <laughs> A bit more lacking in the evidence departments. Fake steroids, magic plant extracts, gas station boner pills, like just overall kind of a lot of crap. But somewhere on this hierarchy lies another kind of supplement, and that is amino acids. And actually, before I sat down to film this video, I wanted to get the opinion of you guys, my audience, as to what you think about these supplements and whether or not you have used them. And as you can tell, the results are actually pretty conclusive, with over 70% of you believing that they are flat out useless. However, there is actually a new study which came out recently that may cause some of you guys to rethink your position. But actually, I'm starting to get a bit ahead of myself. In the meantime, I need to ensure that you guys even know what the hell these supplements even are. All right, the first thing you guys need to understand is that when it comes to protein, amino acids, they're sort of like the building blocks. They're almost kind of like, like Lego pieces. And the kind of cool thing is that even though there are like thousands, just thousands of different proteins in the human body, they are all actually made up of 20 amino acids. And these 20 amino acids, they can be sort of broken down into two categories. You've got essential amino acids, which the human body is not capable of making itself, meaning that if you don't get it from your diet, you're you're just not getting it at all. And then non-essential amino acids are, as the name implies, not essential to get from your diet because the human body is capable of making them. Now, specifically, when it comes to supplements commonly sold on the market, there are two specific versions. And the first one I wanna talk about is called branched chain amino acids, or as you guys have probably heard of before, BCAAs. So the first thing you need to understand is that BCAAs are composed of three specific amino acids. And the first of these, uh, leucine, this one is without a doubt the most important one. And this is because it has been directly shown to stimulate the mTOR pathway, which pretty much turns on muscle protein synthesis in humans and actually all mammals for that matter. This is why a common analogy is that if muscle protein synthesis was like a car, then leucine is the key that starts the engine. <laughs> Now, as for the other two, isoleucine and valine, although yes, they do serve some other purposes, they're more so kind of just like along for the ride, especially valine. You can sort of think of this like Super Saiyan Goku and then Piccolo and then, I don't know, like friggin' Krillin. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, this is kind of where like the, the gravy train for BCAAs, it kind of comes to a halt and some of the problems start to bubble up to the surface. Problems such as the fact that if you are consuming a diet which already has a good solid amount of protein, especially from a variety of sources, chances are you are already getting all the BCAAs that your body needs. I remember there was an excellent post on this topic by Brad Schoenfeld from a few years ago, and in it he mentioned a study, a 2017 study by Jackman and colleagues, and essentially it showed that BCA supplementation post-exercise, yes, it did result in a solid 22% increase in muscle protein synthesis. The only problem is that this effect was still 50% less than you simply taking a high-quality whey protein protein supplement. And then to make matters even worse, there's this article from 2022, which I really think is just kind of like the final nail in the coffin, specifically with BCAAs. It was a systematic review where essentially they looked at 12 other studies in order to come to one overall conclusion. And in it, they determined that even a 20 gram serving of BCAAs, which by the way, is a lot. Even this did not result in a statistically significant improvement in muscle strength or overall body composition. And again, this is specifically looking at individuals who are already consuming a diet with adequate protein intake. If you're looking at a sample of individuals where they're consuming like 40 grams of protein per day from like, I don't know, potato chips, that would be a different story. Essentially, I've always believed that unless you're using BCAAs for some specific circumstance, like you were doing a boatload of fasted training or you're a vegan, besides those two categories, 
I don't really see that much of a use from them. And actually, even then, in that vegan case, you're probably better off just getting yourself a decent vegan protein supplement and like, that's it. One that I actually highly recommend is Whey Forward by My Protein because it is still a whey protein, technically speaking, which has all the essential amino acids and BCAAs and all that good stuff, but it is animal free. I know it's kind of weird. You're thinking like, how the hell is that possible? How could they have done it? Well, they did, and you can learn more about it on their website. However, my opinion on this sort of like supplement class recently, it actually has started to change a little bit. And it all has to do with one small change of this one single letter. See, unlike BCAAs, which are only three essential amino acids, EAAs include all nine. But despite this, BCAAs have always been a significantly more popular supplement. And you can see this clearly just by looking at Google search trends. However, uh, the tide may be turning because there is a new article published in December of 2023 by the International Society of Sports Nutrition. And this actually reminded me of an excellent video done on this topic by Jeremy Ithier from a few years ago. If BCAAs are taken alone, then you only get three of the nine essential amino acids. And when you're in a fasted state, the only source for the other six is from breaking down your muscle tissue. The problem with BCAAs is that you are only getting essentially three pieces of the puzzle, whereas with EAAs, you are getting the entire picture. And thus, it eliminates the need to go get those missing amino acids from muscle protein breakdown. Now, moving on from BCAAs over to regular food, this paper once again alleges that EAAs are a superior option. And yes, I know that is definitely a controversial statement. Specifically, they reference this chart where you see a much faster and overall higher concentration of blood plasma essential amino acids when supplementing with EAAs as opposed to a regular meal containing 70 grams of protein from lean beef. The author's explanation for these results is that due to the slower digestion and release of amino acids after consuming regular food protein, the levels of essential amino acids available in the blood to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, they are going to be lower, and in this case for as much as three hours. Now moving on to dosages, this article stated that muscle protein synthesis, it seems to be increased by an EAA dosage as low as 1.5 to 3 grams, and that this effect seems to increase until you hit sort of a plateau around 15 to 18 grams per serving. Now at this point, if you guys are anything like me, you might be thinking, all right, we get it, BCAAs, they, well, they kind of suck. But how do EAAs fare when compared to traditional whey protein? And specifically in regards to that, there are two statements in this article that are very relevant. First is the claim that even a small dose of EAAs can stimulate muscle protein synthesis to a similar level as a much higher dose of whey protein. Specifically, the study they referenced, this one demonstrated a similar spike in muscle protein synthesis between participants consuming just three grams of EAAs versus 20 grams of whey protein. And the second claim is that the addition of EAAs to whey protein will enhance resulting muscle protein synthesis more than whey protein alone. Almost like together, there's sort of like a tag team effect. And this is supported by a 2022 study where small doses, like surprisingly small doses of whey protein and EAAs together produced a greater subsequent spike in muscle protein synthesis than whey protein on its own. That being said, one thing I do wanna mention is that these results, they can actually be somewhat skewed if you are using an inferior whey protein supplement. See, the problem is if you're looking at a sort of inferior or overall cheaper whey protein supplement, which has an overall inferior concentration of these essential amino acids, particularly leucine, then yeah, it's not really that surprising that EAAs seem far superior. Some companies have even done this kind of really sketchy thing in the industry. It's called protein spiking. You may have actually heard about it like in like magazines or even on TV, I've seen this talked about before. Essentially what they do is they will take cheaper non-essential amino acids like like taurine or glycine, and they will mix it into their protein supplement. They are spiking their own protein supplement to artificially make it seem like there is more protein in it than there actually is. I mean, there actually is that much protein. The problem is there aren't the appropriate ratio of amino acids, particularly um, essential amino acids, particularly leucine, that you would want or expect. Now, if you're watching this and maybe you guys are starting to get a little worried that like, oh shit, you know, the protein that I have been using, am I potentially being, you know, swindled and using a bad 
quality protein. You can actually check this right now and uh, we can figure it out together. Go grab your favorite protein supplement and you wanna do a little bit of math and make sure that 22.5% of uh, the protein like per serving is coming from BCAAs. Uh, the reason behind that, that magic number is because just naturally in, like, in nature, there are 4.5 grams of BCAAs per 20 grams of whey protein. So like uh, this one by my protein, it says on the cover right here, 4.7 grams of BCAAs and there's 20 grams of protein. So just do the math. 4.7 divided by 20, it comes out to like, I don't know, like 23%. If you were to have something like 10% or maybe, hell, maybe it doesn't even say anything about BCAAs or leucine or essential aminos. It says nothing on the label at all. That, I'll be honest, is a little bit of a red flag and it might not be the worst idea in the world to consider alternative options. All right, so at this point, I realize I've thrown a bunch of stuff and numbers and graphs and scientific mumbo jumbo at you, but let's take a step back and kind of summarize what this paper is saying. Number one, although similar in concept, EAAs are not the same thing as BCAAs, they are clearly better. Number two, in regards to timing, they are best consumed before or during a workout. And number three, in regards to dosage, although it seems like EAAs work from as little as 1.5 all the way to 18 grams per serving, I personally think that getting five, maybe 10 grams to be a bit on the safe side, this is a solid amount. And also it won't break you financially as if you were taking like 20 grams per serving per day. And number four, EAAs can provide a large and rapid spike in muscle protein synthesis, which is greater than that which you'd get from regular dietary protein and potentially even higher than that of whey protein. Look, even after all that, at the end of the day, I still think that nothing beats a good standard high quality whey protein supplement. And that is because for muscle protein, protein synthesis from like a bodybuilding standpoint. Yes, it is about, you know, getting the sufficient ratios and quantities of essential amino acids, but also it is very much just about getting an overall quantity or like baseline level of protein. When you are trying to get 160, 180, 200 grams of protein in some cases per day, you trying to do this primarily from essential amino acids it's just not very feasible, not to mention expensive. And the other thing I wanna mention is that whey protein, it also has mechanisms to increase hypertrophy, which are beyond, you know, simply its composition of essential amino acids. This was actually the conclusion of a 2009 paper by Katsinos and colleagues, where they actually looked at this comparison between EAAs and whey protein. And this is one of the reasons why, although I feel that, yeah, EAAs may be a good addition to your diet, they will never be a replacement for whey protein. But that being said, on the flip side, if you are someone who is very serious about like maximizing the amount of muscle that you can build, and you are someone who has a decent disposable income, then including a serving of essential amino acids on top of your regular dietary protein intake, whether that be from food or just regular protein supplements, especially when taken um, intra or pre-workout, then I think getting a scoop of EAAs it's not a bad idea. In fact, it could be downright a helpful idea. And also it just kind of helps if you're craving something kind of like, you know, sweet and refreshing, especially if you're maybe an individual who has kind of difficulty getting enough water per day. I know in my case, I've been doing about a scoop of this is my proteins, the EAAs in their lemonade flavor. Doing a scoop of like this with like a good cold liter jug of water for me, it's probably a lot better than what I usually do when I'm starting to get some kind of like sweet, refreshing cravings during the day and I resort to having like three Diet Cokes or I'm ashamed to say two Monster Energies per day. However, I do want to really, really mention and get this through your guys' heads that this is only what I recommend in certain specific situations. Namely, an individual who is very, I would say like interested in fitness and maximizing their potential to build muscle, probably an individual who is advanced in terms of training or at the very least like late intermediate and also someone who's got a solid amount of disposable income. But for the love of God, and like get, I'm gonna get tight in on this one just so that you hear me loud and clear. If you were watching this and you're some like high school or college kid with 50 bucks to your name, listen to me very carefully. Close this video right now.
go to your local Walmart or I don't know, myprotein.com with coupon code Vitruvian for up to 50% off and just get like the cheapest bag of whey protein that you can find. And if you still can't do that, just go and eat whatever your mom cooks for you for dinner because honestly, in like 90% of cases, that's still pretty damn good.